What's going on everybody? Evan here with Evan Seaton and Polishing and we finally brought a real professional in to help us with the detailing. We got Paul from Springer's uh, Detailing Thanks, out of Evan. California and uh, we're going to start showing off some of our Time to Shine products. Um, show you the way that Paul does it and uh, he's probably one of the best I've ever seen. So Thanks Evan. So today we're going to show you how to clean this seven-year-old farm trucks engine it's nasty. compartment that's probably never been clean. No, it's for sure never been clean. Yeah. <laughs> this is my in-laws truck and they're running in and out of farm fields every day and this motor looks like it's been run in and out every day. Um, I'll probably drop the video here to show what the before looks like and then uh, at the end we'll put the before and the after right next to each other but right now while I'm sitting here talking you're definitely looking at what this motor looks like before we even get started. This thing is absolutely miserable. But to me, I like the challenge and the before and afters on a filthy engine compartment, pretty cool. It's gonna come out good. Paul's honestly one of the best at what he does, so I got no question in my mind that this thing is gonna look absolutely killer when it's done. Um, the main products we're gonna use, um, and this is, Paul and I have talked about it a number of times. It comes down to a personal preference thing. Um, whatever products you prefer is what you prefer. Of course, we're demoing the uh, Time to Shine products here. Um, but when we get done with it, some people just like to leave it clean. Some people like to dress it up. So we're going to show both ways. Mm -hmm. Sounds good? Yeah, so we're going to wash it and clean it with degreaser. We'll show you the process. And time then to Shine degreaser. I like to foam cannon with some just regular car soap. We'll just use our pink soap. Just for kind of a final get in the cracks kind of rinse. Um, we'll dry it and then we'll show you what that looks like. Some people don't like their motor stress. I have a lot of customers that don't want it and I have customers that do. So at the end we'll dress the motor and show you the difference. It looks brand new when it's done. Yeah, the, the little bit of tire shine on it will give it that nice little clean final touches. Yep. Um, but Paul does a lot of fleet stuff. So what we actually did is we took our regular time to shine degreaser and actually put it in a pump up sprayer. I'm actually gonna run over and grab that in a minute here. And um, do you usually rinse first? Yeah, we're gonna rinse the motor. I'll get 75, 80% of the dirt off. Then we'll spray the degreaser on there. Show you how I emulsify it. I got brushes, sponge. Um, then we'll do another rinse. And then we'll go from there. So while you start rinsing and talk about what you're rinsing, I'll go grab that pump-up sprayer and I'll get that all pumped up and ready to go. And as soon as you get it wet, I'll start spraying for you. Do it. So we're going to use Evan's electric pressure washer. Um, we use, I am from California, we use pressure washers in our mobile detailing business. You can use a garden hose if you want. Uh, pressure hose, pressure wash is just a lot better. You get that spray pattern. So let's go ahead and rinse it off. Couple things to keep in mind when you're cleaning engine bays. These are insulators for the heat for the motor. I don't get these very wet if you notice, I just misted it. I'm going to wipe it off with a towel, I don't get it soaking wet because you could ruin these things really fast. Um, also have a lot of people that are worried about getting their engines wet. I've been doing it for 30 years, I've never had a problem. Especially with today's technology, everything's sealed. So let's get in, go ahead and start degreasing. I don't know about you, but I'm like, I'm very strategic about how I do things. And I know since I've worked with you out in 
uh, California a few times. I know that you are also pretty strategic on how you do things. Yep. Now I like to work around the outside, kind of outline myself, and then fill everything else in on my way in. Is there any certain pattern you like to do while you're doing it? Oh, you mean as far as spraying the degreaser? Yeah. Um, no, I do pretty much the same thing. I always frame everything and then fill in the blanks. Yeah. No matter what I'm doing. I find I miss a lot less spots that way. Yeah. I think it's a pattern you do with polishing and it's a pattern I do with a lot of detailing. For sure. <coughs> I just wanted to make sure because I, I never really like, paid too much attention to your rhyme and reason to why you do it. Yeah. But I know I definitely do a lot of stuff that way myself. So if you guys just have a regular paintbrush, um, the thing I do first, you'll see I use black electrical tape around the metal that holds the bristles in. Um, I've scratched paint years and years ago, so that's why I tape them off. I suggest you do the same. It works really good for all the cracks, crevices. Um, just helps loosen up the dirt. The better wash you do, the better your motor's going to turn out. You want to spend some time doing this. If the degreaser starts drying, just give it a little mist. Keep everything wet. You don't want anything to dry. And even though these chemicals are safe, I feel like no matter what chemicals you're using, you should never let anything dry. It's just one of those good rule of thumbs for no matter whose product or what product you're using. You feel about the same, huh? Yeah, chemicals are not made to dry. Yeah, that's for sure. No matter what you got, if it dries, it's going to do damage. And I can already see that this motor is cleaning up really nice. Yeah. Most motors do. They're just dying to be seen for their beauty. <laughs> and these Cummins are just, they're cool looking motors when yeah. they're all cleaned up. So I've noticed, Evan, and everybody watching, these areas get missed. Sometimes. On the back sides? Yeah, because you're always kind of looking this way. I know I'm a creature of that same habit. So like, if you I come miss back here, a lot. yeah, and you look right there, you see all that years of dirt coming behind this grill. So we're going to go ahead and wet the fenders and the window just because it's getting degreaser on it, and then we'll go ahead and rinse the motor. Now what we got is the pink soap and a foam cannon. All I did was one finger's worth of soap and the rest water. So that's the proper dilution. <laughs> Stuff's nice and thick. Now it's just kind of working into the cracks and crevices and it gets into those areas that you just really can't see, right? Yep. I mean, that's the Especially down below in the back. Yep. Areas you can't get by hand. Places you don't want to shove your hand. Yeah. But I like that you rinse the fenders off in between 
just to kind of keep that degreaser from setting. Yeah, you never want to let any product dry on it. Even though this truck has been sitting on it polish job on the paint and everything. Just by nature, I want to keep things wet and not let them dry. I don't want to create any more damage. Not that it's going to, but it's always safe. Yeah. Better safe than sorry, that's for sure. Alright, so you can see you get blasted in the face. All part of the job. It happens. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, so, yeah, I mean, it's just part of the job. Uh, we're going to blow it off now and dry it, and then we'll show you those results. I'll let you do the blower, and then I'll follow behind you with the drying pill. So now why do you blow everything off? That's the real question. Um, so whenever I'm working on anything, I like to do it dry. You know, you're gonna polish the paint, you don't want it wet. You're gonna polish wheels, you don't want them wet. Um, plus, when you get rid of all the water, it helps you to see reality of what's clean and what needs to be retouched. I will say from detailing with you the number of times I've been out to California it's pretty cool to see like you towel most vehicles a number of times like you towel it you blow dry it and you re towel it and it's like I didn't realize how much cleaner a vehicle gets because you're touching it three times between wash first towel and second towel and missing a spot is almost next to impossible I'm not saying it's, it doesn't happen I'm just saying it's a lot less likely if you're touching the vehicle three separate times. So to me, Evan, I've always been a believer of washing and prepping a vehicle, whether it be exterior, motor compartment, door jams, undercarriage, the actual washing and drying is the most important. I will agree. I will definitely You get agree. that right, and you know, most of your work's done. So do you, you have to polish the paint, yeah, you have to polish the glass, yeah, but you know, you get rid of most of the dirt and grime. It's just the easiest way to make sure your detail is going to be awesome. Now while Paul's finishing wiping this thing down, I will say it was nice to be able to teach an old dog a new trick today. Are you calling me an old dog? <laughs> no comment. Alright, so maybe it was just a new trick. But I buy these right here, these little atomizers, and it's like using an aerosol. Now, Paul, you've been using 
uh, Stoner's Trim Shine. Yep, for 25 years. So for 25 years, Paul's been using Stoner's Trim Shine to dress motors, dress um, tires too, right? Yep. And little stuff. And honestly, it's a fantastic product. Um, me personally, I don't use it because we don't have easy access to it over here. Um, we would have to order it and get it in. Um, but when I developed the tire shine, we found that the tire shine also works for that. And since I don't have it in an aerosol, I use it with these little atomizers. And as you pump, you can see it creates kind of like a spray that would come out of an aerosol. So all I have in here is the Time to Shine Tire Shine. And then Paul's just going to spray it on. And then we're going to wipe it down and get it looking Do you want to show fresh? the finished product? Of I do. I will grab the camera here. Okay. It's a good call. I'll bring the camera in and uh, show everybody what it looks like with it just clean without any kind of dressing. It's a good call. So it's almost dry here. And you can kind of see how the plastics are starting to look just fresh and clean. And the rubber up here is fresh. You can see it's starting to dry over here pretty quick. And as you can see, Evan, this I missed it and wiped down with a wet towel. Just a wet towel and that mat's completely clean. I mean, it looks like a brand new mat again. I didn't have to soak it. Yeah, no, um, that's awesome. Also, when you soak these, this thing will drip for two hours. It will take that long to dry. Wow. So right now it's not dripping. We barely got it wet. And then we made sure we got the jams on the frame here done. Mm -hmm. All got off all that bug guts and stuff that was up on the top up here. But yeah, the motor looks nice and fresh. I mean, it's it's pretty well dry here already and dry here. So, all right, let's get it mocked back up and uh, show what it looks like dressed. I'll let you do the spray, Paul. Okay. And then I'll go grab some towels so we can wipe it down, clean it up. And you're not spraying it on super heavy, right? No, this makes such a, a nice light mist. Um, I'm going pretty quick because you don't want to make a bunch of puddles anywhere. Yeah, that's exactly it. The more puddles you got, the more you got to wipe out and dry off. Yeah. yeah. But you definitely want to get down in here. That's where the ladder comes in for shorter folk. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I get it. <laughs> But this is going to make it like brand new. This is how you make an engine like brand new. And now do you let it sit and soak for like 30 seconds or so or I you just start wiping? wiping? right away. Okay. You're going to wipe the excess. That's really all you're doing. In fact, you can put a little on here. Put a little bit on the top. See, that's one of the only areas you and I really differ is like when I spray it on, especially like on the rubber and stuff, I like to really let it sit and soak in so that it kind of gets that little like top layer of residue. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I like to let mine just kind of soak into that rubber a little bit. But I'll tell you what, just wiping this off, it's actually looking so really good. that's why I like to even... get the towel wet a little bit. Because now even... you're not really drying, you're just wiping it in. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I think I may have been, I don't, I don't know if I want to get this on film, but I may have been wrong at one point in time. I was That's waiting to let this stuff soak in, and honestly, didn't even really need to. Yeah. Because at the, at the big rig truck shows, we just spray it in and let it sit and soak, and then continue to go on our day, mm -hmm. and come back later and just wipe off the puddles. You know, we don't really, we don't really sit and work it in. Cause I, the semi motors are so much bigger than this. Oh, they're giant. So there'd just be it'd be a ton, a ton of wiping if that was the case. Yeah. Wipe this off here. I'll tell you well, what. Well, in every vehicle, excuse me. No, go ahead. Every vehicle's different. 
every situation's different. Weather patterns are different. We're in a shop right now. Yeah. At the shows, you're outside. It could be 20 degrees. It could be 120. Yeah. Degrees. No, I agree with that. So you know. We've worked in all of those. I'm pretty sure. There's always room for, always wiggle room. You know. Never want to stay rigid in any part of life. Yeah, you want to stay flexible. You have to. Yeah. Every scenario is different. Now on these fender jams and stuff, normally I'd wipe them down with a, uh, the same tire shine just to kind of gloss them up a little bit because the paint's always kind of like flat. Okay, so that's what I did because there's no clear in here. Yeah. They paint these, they don't clear these or those. Like you could ceramic seal it, but honestly I just feel like it's always a waste. So I just yeah. feel like I'm doing an extra step when I really don't need to. Yeah, I mean just, I wipe this in, turn around, use a dry towel, and kind of dry it. And I'll tell beautiful. you what, Paul, this thing looks absolutely fresh for how absolutely terrible this thing was I when we started. I think you score points with, with the in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, I could use some help in that department. <laughs> but no, this is absolutely great. I think... Uh, yeah, you can do this too. If you want. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring it in close here in a little bit and uh, show you guys. This is just unbelievable. I mean, Paul is a master at his craft. He knew exactly the pattern he wanted to do. And I've been blessed enough to work with him uh, a few times at his, a few of his locations in California at some of his fleet accounts that he does. And we got to work together last year at SEMA. Yeah. So I'm pretty familiar with the system that he likes to do. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of cool. I always enjoy working with you. You're such a hustler and really driven and motivated. So it's cool to get to work with somebody else that has a lot of the same values. Yeah, I appreciate you too. Evan. I feel the same way. And this is unreal. This really didn't take us that long. Nah. Uh, I mean, what are we? Some people could pop the hood. We're at like 30 minutes on the camera here. They could pop the hood and go, oh my gosh. But it really doesn't take that long. Yeah. Probably we could probably do it 15 minutes if we weren't talking and sharing. Yeah. I, I feel like we have out at your place in California. Oh yeah, we could have two or three done right now. Yeah. Yeah, when you're just cramming them out and knocking them out, it definitely goes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. And this is just unbelievable. I mean, yeah, you gotta get that camera right here. Yeah, let me bring you in close and show you what this looks like. It's pretty awesome. I mean, look at this. This dressing just cleaned it up to look like it's brand, brand new again. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of dressing engine compartments. I mean, look at this. You could barely tell the Cummins logo was silver before, and it just like cleaned up so nice. This piece here, I mean, even down in all the little nooks and crannies here, just beautiful. And that felt, I just can't get over that, how clean that is. And yeah, all you did was just dry wipe or wet wipe it. Yeah, when I rinsed around here, I misted it to give it a little, get it a little wet, kind of get it ready to wipe down. And then at the very end, I use a wet towel and just wipe it down. It just works really good. And you're not destroying it because they're very fragile. Very fragile. Well, I'll start this while Paul's finishing up what he says I missed all the time because <laughs> Listen, he's the best, and he's super anal, and he details every day, so it's, it's hard for me to compete on that level. But I gotta say thanks to this guy for coming out. My, my YouTube channel is definitely better off having him in it, and uh, I'm proud to be a part of his YouTube channel as well. Um, all the products we used, go through what we used. We used... So, time to shine products. Uh, degreaser, the tire shine. Uh, pink soap. And the Pink soap with foam cannon and then the tire shine. So three products. So the tire shine I really like. You know, most tire shines are so glossy you would never use them on anything else but tires. But this, as you wipe, you can create matte. If you leave it, it'll be glossy. So it's kind of your choice. And it's not greasy. Very easy to use. I really like these Time to Shine products. I'm glad that Evan has involved me with Time to Shine products, testing. Yeah, Paul's been a big part of our testing process. We've sent him a number of products during our, our development stage, and he tested stuff out, and we made some fine-tuned adjustments because of Paul. Yeah, we use them every single day, fleets, car collections, 
six days a week, and uh, we fine tuned them, and they're really good. I trust Paul a lot. He's done everything from fleet semis to fleet cars, all the way up to multi-million dollar cars. I mean, you just got to be a part of doing one of the Riddler cars this year. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that was really fun. 100 hour detail. Whoa, 100 hours of detail. Awesome. You, uh, you are a bigger man than myself. Cause I get <laughs> you know, burnt out on the long projects. With me, I get, you know, I work by myself on it and I got lost in it. Yeah. And I mean, 12 hours to go by, it was just awesome. But I'll tell you what, seeing the pictures of that car, it was beautiful. And I know that if I, if Paul's customers trust him to touch a multi-million dollar car, I know that I'm asking the right guy for feedback for our products. And if we're not involving polishers and detailers in the development stage, then we're just another company shoving products into the industry. And I didn't want to be that. So I'm glad to have people like Paul who are what I consider to be the top of their class. Appreciate it. Um, helping develop that stuff so we can make sure that our products are putting out at the at the top level. I mean, you just saw this. This motor was filthy. And as you're seeing now, you're seeing the motor completely finished and dressed and it looks better than a brand new motor. I mean, I don't think it looked this nice straight from the factory. Maybe clean, but it wasn't dressed and you ready to You know what I love impress. about doing motors? I mean, we do paint corrections, full details, people get excited. Man, when you, when they see it that dirty, it's such a and they come back change. at the end of the day and see you pop the hood, and they're like, "Oh my gosh!" <laughs> it's just something there is about because most motors are filthy. Yeah, and most people don't even think about them because how many people actually do work underneath their own hood anymore? Not many. Not the many. mechanic sees it every time you're in the yeah. shop, but most people don't see it. And when they pop that open and they've seen that you've done a full detail. This is it. It's such a dramatic change from start to finish. And it's really good for the vehicle. Keeps yeah. it cooler. Yep. If you have any leaks, you can see them. Um, it just looks better. For me, a dirty motor just drives me nuts. Everything dirty drives me nuts, but... <laughs> I mean, my 04 Suburban, my motor looks this clean. 2004. That's 16 years old. You got a couple hundred thousand miles on it? Got 227,000 miles. And still looks brand new. I can attest to this. I, I borrowed it when I was out there last trip out there by him. And this thing is... It looks like it came straight off the showroom floor. I mean, it just speaks volumes, and that's how we want to take care of everything. So, anyways, we could blab on and on. Really glad <laughs> you could. guys kept watching. Good. Really thankful. But three products: degreaser, um, soap. the soap, and the tire shine. Um, of course, Paul to cut down on his time. He uses the degreaser and a pump-up sprayer. It works so much faster than single squirting. Um, but single squirt works as well. If you don't have a pump-up sprayer, you'll be just fine. Just for us trying to get fleet stuff done and trying to get stuff done in a hurry, we gotta have the pump sprayers and yeah, stuff and the to keep rolling. Um, all those products are available on goshinon.com slash shop. And um, definitely head over and check out Paul's YouTube channel. If you're already watching on Paul's YouTube channel, thank you. Yeah, Springer's Detailing, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And of course, if you're watching on my channel, head over to Paul's page, give him a follow. His, uh, his YouTube channel is full of great useful information um, he's got a bunch of really short videos in there that are fantastic stuff as well those short videos are just some killer stuff some great little nuggets jammed into one and two minute videos and um, we appreciate you guys thanks for watching thank you see you next time